great day to my beautiful students here at Frostburg State University. All of the grad students, uh, hopefully, hopefully everybody's having a great day and great time with uh, being off, getting our little small little break from this work, but no rest for the weary. Okay, uh, we will uh, dive in and we'll go into depth discussion on whether acts on the field violence should be regulated by sports leagues or regulated through civil or criminal courts. Here's, here's my structured approach to my preparation. Number one, reading and research. Delve into sports law and ethics literature, focusing on how sports organizations traditionally handle misconduct. Explore external sources such as legal journals, case law, and news articles analyzing significant incidents of on-field violence. Examine the rules and regulations of various sports leagues, such as the NBA, the NFL, and FIFA, to understand their disciplinary, disciplinary frameworks. Two, consultation with colleagues and super, supervisors. Organize discussions or study groups with peers to exchange ideas and viewpoints. Gaining insights from different perspectives, seek guidance from supervisors or professionals with ex expertise in sports law or ethics to understand academic and practical implications. Again, they have sports attorneys and things of that nature. If you have pool or if you have some connections, who knows, you might wanna pick their brains, figure that out to dive deep and, and, go, and go a little further. Three, gather specific evidence and examples, investigate prominent cases of on-field violence, such as the infamous Malice at the Palace. I was literally there. It was amazing. Now I'm just tripping. I was there, but it was it was it was it was wild. But um, I still will say that the fans participated in getting that to where it was at. In the NBA or the the, the Luis Suarez biting incidents in soccer, consider how each case was addressed, both by the sports leagues and in some instances the league system, the legal system. Review statistical data on the frequency and the severity of the on-field violence across different sports. Four, evaluate both approaches. Self-regulation by sports leagues, pros, swift responses, response times, decisions aligned with sports-specific contexts and cultural, potential deter deterrence tailored to the sports environment, uh, fines, suspensions, and also removal. Cons, risk of bias towards star players, in inconsistent enforcement, and a lack of transparency in the decision-making proce uh, uh, decision process. Regulation through civil or criminal courts, pros ensures justice aligns with societal norms and laws, provides a formal and impartial process, serves as a strong deterrent by emphasizing legal consequences. Cons, Ma may result in Protracted processes potentially dis dis disrupts league operations and lacks the nuanced understanding of the sport's inherent physicality. Five, ethical and societal pers per perspectives. Reflect on the ethical responsibility of sports leagues to maintain the integrity of the sport and protect participants. Consider societal expectations for fair play and the role of sport and modeling behavior for the wider community. Six, formulate a passionate conclusion is what I'm going to do. After, after careful consideration of the pros and cons, I am articulating a position that advocates for the most effective balance possibly suggesting a hybrid approach where leagues handle certain aspects internally while, while uh, several cases fall under judicial scrutiny. Emphasize the importance of protecting the integrity of the game while upholding societal values, advocating for transparent processes that deter misconduct and ensure accountability. Again, there is a fine line between letting people get away with uh, egregious 
activities and holding people accountable for their actions. Um, I feel that it's vitally important for us to, to figure that out as we navigate into our our uh, our calling and that's that's to run facilities or run teams and make sure that they are adhering to uh, all rules and regulations and doing it the right way. Um, my resources that I use, I use uh, Gullet, C. Vallis, P. Bust, A. and Quake J, 1993 predictors, predictors of on ice aggression acts in Pee Wee ice hockey players, Journal of Sports and Exercise uh, Psychology. Um, that will be uh, page 15, I'm sorry, 262 to two, through 272. And this study explores the uh, predictors that can lead to aggressive behaviors on the ice, offering insights into uh, uh, psychological and situational factors influencing player conduct, which can be useful when discussing self-regulation in sports leagues. And number two, um, the Mc McClushan J and Hamilton J 2015, the role of criminal law in regulating sporting violence, a review of key cases in principal sports law journal, 336 through 350. And uh, this article reviews criminal cases involving sports violence, analyzing the interplay between criminal justice system, sports disciplinary bodies. It provides context for the discussion on whether civil or criminal courts should play a more prominent role in regulating on-field violence. Have a great day and don't you waste your education. Get your degree. Let's go.